Hello students, today we are going to learn about the next topic in chapter 5 that is effective stress principle. So coming to the next topic, it deals with the neutral stress or pore water pressure and the effective stress. Coming to the pore water stress or the neutral stress, here the pressure of water in the pores of the soil is nothing but the pore water pressure. It is denoted by letter U. So, the magnitude of pore water pressure will depend mainly on the depth below the groundwater table or the, uh, the conditions of the seepage flow. This is a water table. This is free water surface. The same thing. So, under hydrostatic conditions, no water flow takes place. But the pore water pressure at the given point is uh, given by U is equal to gamma W into Z, the vertical distance. The neutral Z is nothing but the depth below water table or overlying water surface. It is mainly with respect to the water surface. So, the natural level of groundwater is called water table or the phreatic surface. These are the two names. Water level is also known as phreatic, phreatic surface. So, it is very convenient to think of pore water pressure as a pressure exerted by a column of water in an imaginary standpipe which is inserted at the given point. Under conditions of no seepage flow, the water table is generally taken as horizontal. So, the magnitude of the pore water pressure at the water table is taken as zero. Below the water level, pore water pressure is always positive. What do you mean by effective stress? The principle of effective stress was first enunciated by Carl Terzaghi in the year 1936. This principle is valid for the saturated soils. So, effective stress is nothing but the intergranular pressure which is equal to the total vertical reaction force which is transmitted at the points of the contact of soil. Grains which is divided by the total area which is including uh, where the water is also occupied. In other words, it is a pressure which is transmitted from particle to particle through the points of contact through the soil mass, given soil mass. So, see this is a total pressure, sigma. These are the different soil masses. See, the it is a effective stress which is applied on each and every particle. So, if there is no physical meaning uh, and uh, it can not be directly measured. So, uh, it can only be computed knowing the total stress in the pore water pressure. This is the total stress and uh, effective stress is denoted by gamma dash, uh, sigma dash and it is equal to sigma minus u. So, in a saturated soil system, as the voids are completely filled with water, the pore water pressure acts equally in all the directions. See this one. So, the effective stress is not the exact contact stress between the particles, but it is a distribution of the load which is carried by the soil particles over the area which we consider. So, it cannot be measured and can only be computed. So, the effective vertical stress due to the self weight of the soil is given by the pressure which is transmitted from grain to grain at a contact point through the soil mass which is termed as an effective pressure. So, the difference between the total stress that is sigma z total and the pore pressure u in a saturated soil that is filled with water has been defined by the Terzaghi as an effective stress that is sigma z dash that is equal to sigma z dash is equal to sigma z total minus u. This is very important. So, if the total stress is increased due to additional load applied to the soil, the pore water pressure also initially increases to the counteract the additional stresses. This both are dependent on each other. So, this increase in pressure within the pores might also cause the water to drain out from the soil mass and the load is transferred to the soil grains. This can also lead to the increase in the effective stresses. So, what about stresses in the saturated soil? Nothing but if water is seeping, the effective stress at any point in a soil mass will also differ uh, than that in the static case. So, it may, it will increase or decrease which will depend upon the direction of the seepage. So, the increasing in effective pressure due to the flow of water through the pores of the soil is known as a seepage pressure. This pressure is known as seepage pressure. What about the stresses in saturated soil without seepage? So, a column of saturated soil mass with no seepage of water in any direction, the total stress at the elevation of the point, this point A is taken, can be obtained from the saturated unit weight. So, the height is considered as HA, the water level uh, height from the water table is HW, this is the pore water which is present, and this is the soil particles. 
So the total stress at the elevation of point A can also be obtained from the saturated unit weight of the soil and also the unit weight of the water which is above it both. So it is nothing but sigma z is equal to gamma w into h and h a minus h by gamma sat that is saturated unit weight where sigma z is nothing but the total stress at the elevation of point A. Gamma sat is the saturated unit weight of the soil and h a is nothing but the distance between the point A and the water table. So, uh, if you consider these things, these are the forces acting at the points of contact of soil at the level of the point A. This is the level of the point A which is considered. What is the importance of effective stress? The effective stress will control mainly the engineering properties of the soil. Uh, the compression and the shear strength of the soil are also dependent on the effective stress. Thus, compression is given by F1 into sigma, shear strength is given by F2 into sigma. So, as effective stress of the soil increases, the compression of the soil will occur generally. So, the shear strength of soil will mainly depend on the effective stress only. As effective stress is changed, the shear strength also changes automatically. Thank you.